Hello, everybody. Welcome to Beyond the Walls, your safe haven for anything paranormal, spooky, and just downright weird. My name is Fred, and we got a little bit something different for you today. We are going to be kind of telling a story. I don't know if it's a true story, but it's a spooky story nonetheless that we found on Reddit. So if you guys like this type of thing and you want to see us doing more of these, please comment down below, subscribe, and let us know what you think. Um, I'm going to be telling the story as if I'm the person that it happened to, and Sarah will be popping in, kind of doing her own take on the story. It's going to be different. It's not going to be anything that anyone else has really done in this sort of format. So let us know what you think. And uh, if you want to see more, let us know. We'll gladly do more. Hey, guys, let's jump right in. So it starts with a guy named Matt uh, that lived out in Washington and worked for a banking company and, you know, in the city. And he just wanted to get away, take a vacation. And he went into the deep, deep woods of Washington. And, you know, if you know anything about Washington, these woods are like hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of acres of really deep woods and so he had gone in and hiked all day so his first day went well he sat by the fire put the fire out put his tent up and decided he was going to call it a night little did he know that this was going to be the beginning of a very terrifying few days so as nighttime was nearing i stumbled upon this clearing it was the perfect spot for me to set up camp for the night. So I pitched my tent, set up a fire, you know, got myself some food, ate a little bit, and I decided to go inside my tent and just go to bed. Now, not too long after I fell asleep, I started hearing some strange noises outside my tent. I wasn't sure if it was an animal or something that I should be concerned of. So after a little while, I finally mustered up the courage, crawled towards the doorway of my tent and unzipped it just slightly enough for me to be able to peek out and see what was outside. And what I saw chilled me to the bone because crouching right at my fire pit, which by the way, the fire was completely out, was a man just crouching, just staring into my fire pit. I'm in the middle of nowhere. How did this man find me? Now, by, by some chance, did he build a campsite too far away? I, I don't think so. A couple seconds later, the man looked up and just made direct eye contact with me. His eyes bulged, and then he just stood up and just took off running straight into the woods. My heart was pounding. Who was this guy? Where did he come from? Was this some drunk guy just stumbling through the woods? Was it some lunatic following me, ready to just pounce on me into my tent and slit my throat? I, I, I don't know. Now, once my fear finally subsided, I somehow managed to fall back asleep. How? terrifying is that i mean you know there's no ghost there's no bigfoot there's no cryptid you know but it, it's just something that there's no explanation for and that is absolutely terrifying so about two days later he had already managed to hike 10 to 15 miles now if you guys could put that in perspective of driving you know average speed going 10 miles away is probably going to take you 15 20 minutes to get there so that's how far he had gone in a two-day period and not only had he gone that far he didn't really follow a specific path so you know it would be really hard if someone was trying to trace his steps or see where he was going he kind of was you know zigzagging around different things and um you know not purposely not staying on what would look like a normal trail and he was convinced okay you know no one's gonna know where i am because i just took a random shot here and just wound up in some random spot so he, he had chalked up that, you know, wh whoever that was, or, you know, if, even if it was an apparition, whatever it was, is long gone and he's safe now. I decided to break down for the night and set up my camp. So as I'm sitting around the fire, you know, eating, I heard more noise off in the distance. And as it got closer, I realized that's no animal. I called out, who's there? And then I hear a voice boom back, not that far into the darkness. Do you know how to get to Bell's Canyon? My blood curdled. I had this split decision. I decided to grab my flashlight and just point it at him. Before it even got near him, he just yelled. Aim that away. And, you know, me being a, a sane person, I did not want to piss off a crazy person in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night. A couple seconds after that, he asked once again, Do you know how to get to Bell's Canyon? But this time, it sounded like he was almost directly in front of me. I don't know how he got that much closer. There was no footsteps or anything. So then, right after that, I decided, you know what? I, I need to see who this is. I 
pulled out the flashlight and aimed right at this guy and my heart sank because as soon as the flashlight hit this man in the face i realized this is the same dude the same guy that was sitting right at my campfire two days ago how how did he find me there's no possible way he accidentally stumbled upon me this guy has been following me for two days as soon as my flashlight hit him he gave me that same look that he gave me two days ago and just got up and ran and i'm like no i'm going to chase him i got up and i started running too but then i realized no 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 no. i'm not going to get lost in the woods and be in a worse situation than i already am so i stopped and maybe i'm about like 100 200 feet away from my campsite i decided to turn around and run back straight to my campsite but like seriously what is this bell's canyon i am an avid outdoorsman and i've never ever heard of this place i frequent these woods i have never heard of this place ever in my life so at this point matt decided this trip is over i am getting out of dodge you know i'm just gonna i'm gonna head for the out and that's where i'm going but again just being very cautious, you know, hiding kind of behind trees once in a while, taking a look around, just making sure nobody's, you know, following him. Because, you know, our natural instinct is this person showed up not once but twice in really random areas. I want to make sure he's not following me again. So, you know, over like a three day period, you know, he just he, he bolted out of there and there were several moments where he still thought something fishy was going on. So at that very moment, I decided, you know what? Screw this. The trip is over. I'm out. As soon as morning hit, I decided to pack all my stuff as quick as possible and decided to make the three day trek back to my car. As I'm going through, I'm constantly doubling back, trying to throw off anyone that has been following me, occasionally hiding, waiting to see if anyone, you know, could be following me. Mostly this crazy guy. I really cannot describe just how absolutely terrifying this was to feel like I was being hunted like some animal through the woods. And you know, come to think of it, the first night that I was hiking out, twice, I heard what sounded like a person walking circles outside my tent, like almost like he was surveying my campsite. But by the time I mustered the courage to look out my tent and see, nobody was out there. And on the second night, I heard what sounded like an animal making noises at first in the distance but slowly i realized it sounded like someone was making animal calls like mimicking an animal now a little bit of advice for anybody that decides they want to camp in washington state you're camping in the middle of the woods and someone asks you in the darkness do you know how to get to bell's canyon i would get out that night you guys can you imagine the amount of fear you know, the woods are a beautiful place, but being there alone, being there alone after dark, let alone, I can't even put myself in, in that position. And the fact that he had heard howling that sounded like a human doing it, whatever it is, that must have been the absolute most terrifying thing to go through. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm way more afraid of something like this happening than like a bear coming to my tent these type of stories happen all the time they're all over the internet we're gonna try and gather up the spookiest scariest ones we can find that were told by the people that actually experience them and bring them to life for you we really 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 hope that you enjoyed this video quick side note that i want to end on though i took the liberty of trying to find bell's canyon on the map and there's a bell canyon it's in utah so you have um you know you have Washington and then you'd have to go through Idaho to actually reach Utah where Bell Canyon is. Now could he have heard bells when it was actually just Bell Canyon? Very possible. It makes you wonder is this a lost spirit, a lost hiker, somebody that had maybe perished or passed away hiking at the actual Bell Canyon and somehow his spirit or you know whatever is left behind and just wandering around and made its way you know up to washington and he's still looking for bell canyon gives me chills every time i hear the story and now telling it it's giving me chills thank you everyone for watching uh again if you guys like this type of content or anything for the channel please drop a comment down below let us know if you want us to do this you know this was very easy for us to film and everything and there are so many stories out there that are absolutely terrifying and i would love love to tackle them so 
Thank you all for watching. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.